Hello everyone, welcome back after such a long pause. I'm really happy to see you here in the south of Norway. I hope you are doing well and enjoying this really hot summer. We've been living here quite okay and today is the 14th of July and it's been not that hot up to now but today the temperature started rising and we had to 26 maybe more but up to now we had from 20 to 23 degrees during the daytime and at night we had 17 15 degrees celsius so it was really nice and cool and i'm very sorry for those in europe having 30 37 40 degrees in spain i guess yeah hope it will it will end soon uh, first I want to say I'm sorry for the big pores and I've been thinking why I stopped doing that why I stopped filming and I realized that I wanted my videos to be as perfect as I could and I spent so much time on preparation and then on editing and deleting and cutting the tiny bits that in fact killed my joy for filming and now I'm thinking motorbike. Now I'm thinking why? I'm not a professional filmmaker, I'm not a YouTuber, an experienced YouTuber. I can make mistakes. There can be some flaws and mistakes and I will try of course to, to make it as nice as I can, but it doesn't have to be perfect, does it? So I hope that will not ruin my joy for filming and we can meet more often. I took a piece of paper and started writing down what I want to talk about and there were so many different things um, and it's quite a lot. So I decided to put two or three things at a time in one video so that we could catch up and then like slowly go through the knitting journey. So today I will show you some of my finished, most recent finished objects. Some nearly finished and before I recorded I finished because it was like 10 minute work to be done and that's it. So they will be finished. <laughs> but I've recorded and finished part so I will show you and finished and finished. And then I will show you what I'm knitting. I'm knitting a warm, it's not very warm, it's thin yarn, but like winter sweater and I'm knitting a summer top. And I will start recording here uh, a badger adventure because yesterday I met four badgers and I saw three of them like playing and rolling and jumping on one another. And it was in my forest where I walk my dog. So I decided let's try and tame them and see if they have a biological clock. So today I'm taking with you, so I already filmed that, a jar of cat food and I left in that place where I found them playing. Today I didn't find anything. And in the morning when I walk my dog, I'll check if there is food. And every evening I will bring a jar of food and it's dry cat's food. And we will see if it's possible to tame them so they come for food at a certain time. So I left at 8 in the evening, so I was there at 8.10. So let's see if it works. Okay, <laughs> so now let's go to my finished first, okay? I'm so happy to see you back. Oh, why did I stop filming? <laughs> so here is my first finished object. I finished it maybe two weeks ago and that's a cotton sweater for my daughter. I knitted it 
bottom up using quite cheap cotton I even don't remember what size needles I use I guess 3.5 I'm not very fond of knitting cotton because all mistakes you make it's noticeable here if I cast it 280 stitches and knit it in the round my gray stripes are a bit wider than green ones because because that was the design of my daughter then I divided for the front and the back when I came to the armpits while I was still knitting the sleeves I started decreasing closing the stitches for for the neckline and then I started also doing the dropped shoulder line uh, using short row method and when I finished it I knitted one round picking up all the uh, wrapped stitches and I did the same on the other side and then I knitted them using a three needle method for the sleeves uh, I picked up the stitches here and I started with nine stitches and I was using short row method as well and every time I came here I picked up no they were picked up but I just knitted three more wrapped the next stitch knitted here added three more wrapped and so on till I came here then I started knitting in the round so that gave me this bit of fabric it gives a better sitting on on your shoulder and then I knitted down used one-on-one -on -one ribbing so I removed the camera and simply bound off I had to redo a couple of times because this though I picked up so nicely the stitches <laughs> cotton doesn't like that kind of trick so I still wasn't happy with the final result so I had to repeat the picking of the stitches a couple of times in neckline so I picked up the stitches using my gray yarn and I used smaller size needles I picked from both sides I was picking the stitches and wrapping holding one extra needle here and wrapping it every time I picked a stitch and wrapped here picked a stitch from here wrapped here so doing this manipulation I got the stitches here and I got the stitches there so I knitted one two three four rounds yes four rounds here and four rounds here and then I knitted them together holding this needle and this together and knitting two together two together two together and then I knitted one on one ribbing and used the usual bind off uh, in fact it looks really nice and gives a clean look even though it's cotton so I'm very happy with it that's a simple a simple sweater to wear in autumn or on cold summer days though I think all Europe and the rest of the world is suffering from the heat so that's the finished object This is one of my finished sweaters and I finished it about a month and a half ago. It has a very nice smooth gradient that I enjoyed so much that I bought the pattern. I haven't used much from that pattern uh, because it has a round yoke. I just wanted to take the rhythm of alternating uh, the colors 
so I could get the same result but I didn't use any of the numbers and stitches that <laughs> it asked for and I also wanted to try out a nice jute stitch on raglan so it's knitted top down in fact I don't remember what I what yarn I used for this one and I checked my notes and it says nothing <laughs> that's very unusual for me and the hand dyed yarn I used I have another skein so it's this sock yarn base 27 merino wool 25 nylon 100 grams has 300 meters uh, I bought it from the Ukraine when I was like I purchased quite a lot of hand dyed yarn because I think they're really overpriced in Europe I know it's a lot of work but still to knit a sweater it's like an investment with this yarn so I used that one I also used that mohair it's knitting for olive that company makes very nice muted colors and I found it really matching and you also have to use another kind of mohair so in fact four different types of yarn uh, and I used plume from my stash I love it it's Raum that's a Norwegian brand so first you knit using uh, let's call it ash pink ash pink colors and together held together with mohair and then from here you start alternating with this yarn if you see there's a round of the new yarn and then two rounds of pink and again one round and then two rounds and you slowly go like this and at some point you stop using the ash pink yarn but you keep using pink mohair together with this one and you keep knitting 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 and at around this point you start alternating two strands of mohair uh, knitting one round with gray and two rounds with ash pink and so on and then at the very bottom you simply go to gray mohair and hand dyed yarn and that's how you finish it for the finishing I used the Italian bind off method that looks nice in fact I haven't worn it at a single time because I finished it late in spring and it was already quite warm or maybe it was the beginning of summer so it was too warm to be worn so I can't tell you how this yarn wears the only thing maybe I'm not super happy though it looks nice when I try it on is the neckline mm, maybe I should have made it more rounded though on the body it looks quite okay I don't like these kind of corners uh, but I'm not fond of big open wide neckline so maybe that's why I don't like it another finished object is this that weighs 24 grams these are baby socks for my new nephew I've knitted already a pair of socks I made them a bit smaller I guess that's for age 0 to 3 months or around 3 months old uh, I use my leftover yarn that's tin, tin merino from San Nesgarn. It's knitted on two needles back and forth, not in the round. Uh, and I found a video of a Russian girl. She was knitting row by row explaining how to knit. She didn't have any graphic chart. So I watched the video and put down the notes and then I started knitting that made my knitting so fast and when I see the visual like chart or explanation it's so much easier to understand so basically first you knit the sole then you knit this center part see 
it's like this then you need this only this center part and then you need the the cuff the the ribbing uh, you can go as long as you want I did according to the pattern it says 30 rows and I changed the bind off she was using a bit tighter one and what I like about them is the heel it's not a sharp 90 degree heel but it's like slightly rounded and just the heel the babies have and my sister said they fit perfectly and they sit very nicely and comfortably I found a ball of alpaca yarn in my stash and I went to knit another pair of socks for my nephew it's a bit thicker yarn so I will use the same numbers and I will get um, a bit bigger sock and I'm planning to do it on the camera so if you want to join me you're more than welcome that will be I hope quite soon <laughs> is that all I have to show yes that's all with my finished projects and now I'm going to talk about semi finished projects this is a top that I knitted using Tsenazgan Lina and Tin Lina here, but I just hold two strands together. And I knit it kind of like polo neckline that is now very, very fashionable. You know, in fact, this top has a long story because it's already one year old. Uh, I bought Lina and knitted it all. I wanted it to be kind of cropped. And when I put it on, I didn't like the look of it. It was too short, wide, kind of not complementing my, my shape. So I left it. I was, I don't know why I left it for so long, but after this summer I took it out and I had some tin Lina bought a bit before when it was on sale this like ash rose color so I unraveled up to here and just added the stripes I made this black stripes or dark gray the same width but here I added two rounds more every time I knit it. I started with four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and so on. And then I finished. Very simple, one-to-one -one ribbing. And then I wanted the buttons, but I don't remember where I put the buttons. So it, it was lying like this and finished. And now I finally found my box with the buttons because I was tidying all our clothes and the, the ones that had to be thrown away had very nice buttons so I simply cut them out so and now I will sew in the buttons and it's ready to to go so I will use maybe I think four buttons are okay or maybe no I think four I saw this sardine on Pinterest it I will put the picture somewhere I loved the increases and decreases it has because it gives that perfect shape of a fish. Can you see? Like I fell in love with it. I don't need it. I don't know where to put it. But I just wanted to train how to make those increases and decreases to give it a beautiful shape. Can you see the back is like kind of straight and here like this the belly like the head and the belly widening and then again narrowing like a perfect silhouette of a fish you don't need any sewing nothing no cutting of yarn I bought the pattern just for training myself of to know more to learn some new techniques and it was like I stuffed it but somehow a bit 
and you see it's a bit bumpy so I'm just on the video I'm still trying to flatten it out and I couldn't find those two boxes with the uh, buttons but I remember I cut out some some metal flat metal buttons where, where do they have the eyes somewhere here so I will sew the buttons as well and my fish will be ready but as you know I'm very fond of knitted project bags and I had some baby llama wool that sounds very nice it stings like nettles you can't wear it it was Sanna's garden product and quite expensive the ball was a, around 8 euros I guess I bought them on discount they were 50% off I bought this ash rose and light blue I knitted a sweater I couldn't wear so then I unraveled it and knitted some socks and some mittens and from what I had I knitted I'm knitting project bags so I knitted this and then I made the lining the lining is the same I showed you in the previous videos it's from my bed sheet the fabric is very very thin so I sewed in the zipper so what I have to do is now to do hand sewing to put it inside like that as you see it's a bit b bigger and wider and longer so it could hold like a big project and now I have to go like this and now I have like to take a matching thread and nicely sew it up and it will be my big big project bag I also added here a strand of of mohair I had from I don't know which times as you can see all these projects need sewing and sewing is not my favorite thing this is my project I'm currently working on this is a sweater for my 11 year old daughter I had two balls of grayan that's tin merino from Sanna's garden and I had the yellow one that is let me find alpaca wool it has 60% alpaca and 40% wool so I decided to make it stripy but it's not all stripy because as I've mentioned I had only two balls so from here it just goes yellow i'm knitting on needles number three and all the cuffs and ribbings on needles 2.5 what is so special uh, about this sweater so i used the double neckline to get this i cast on provisional cast on so i crocheted a chain and then i turned it just flipped it and from the bumps I went into the bumps and picked up the stitches 124 and then I started knitting in the round and when I was happy with the length it has to be like double length I unraveled the provisional cast on and picked up the stitches on another pair of needles and then I knitted the beginning and the end together and it was done then I decided to do a mug hem just to make like the machine knit look for that I again had to double their amount of stitches and I knitted a hollow tube here so I knitted eight rounds so four rounds are here and four on the other side and then again I knitted the stitches together and made the first increases uh, I used the traditional 
kind of increasing pattern it means you knit eight rounds and on the ninth round you add 32 stitches I added 31 because it just nicely divided so I thought one stitch wouldn't change anything I knitted four yarn over but it was twisted yarn over and again knitted four yarn over and then I made the lifting of the back you can see it here here and then after this I started knitting the stripes each stripe is 10 rounds and at the same time I was counting the rounds to to make increases so five times I knitted eight rounds and on the ninth I added one stitch so here I knitted four added one then here I knitted five added one I knitted six added one seven added one and I guess eight added one I will give you the details a bit later when I finish it yes seven and then the other increases I started uh, making after 10 rounds on the 11th I chose to do this because I didn't want my sweater to grow too much though it's oversized but it's still for a child so it doesn't have to be too big for the sleeves I added 11 stitches for the armpits and knitted the sleeve I made decreases six times knitting two together knit knit two together and for the cuff I'm using a new te technique I haven't done before so I knitted ribbing to knit to purl and then when I was happy I decreased a certain amount of stitches by knitting one out of two purl stitches so I decreased 15 stitches and then I knitted five rounds in stockinette and now I will have to fold it like this and to sew where the with the stitches where the stockinette started and it will give this this look oh sorry the moped I found a version video how to make it it, uh, it looks very neat and tidy so I want to try it out what else about it I have about 20 centimeters to knit here for the body and I've already made three decreases on the sleeve so I have three more to go and the ribbing that's so much about it all the exact numbers I will give a bit later when I talk about the finished object because uh, I kept writing notes so I have all the stitches and how I made the increases and it's about the cuff how to to decrease and how to do it but that will be a bit later in, in some other videos see the first mushrooms and someone had nibbled it a bit yeah and it landed. can you see this hill over there the brown one so they were playing right on the hill and now I came very silently and there's no one here so I'm going there and I will leave some cat food all the job not that big and I will check tomorrow in the morning when I walk my dog again I keep him on a leash because I didn't know what I would find I will check there again if they found the food and in the evening I will leave again come here this way come Quentin. Oh. 
cone like this a cone like this and here here where is like a circle and the food is there and there is also some I will just make it easier for my, me to understand okay so there's a circle with the food and there's another circle and right by this rotten tree okay the jar is empty 